Welcome to Talking with Famous People. I'm your host, Zach. We have host Eric, and Eric is going to interview me. I am. I have a few more questions. The INTP personality type, I have a theory, has two different subtypes. One of which, functionally, you might say, has the SI and FE reversed. I just talked to another INTP, Zach, who reminds me somewhat of you in that he's, well, some, some INTPs are very deliberate in their answers and very short in their answers, and some are more expansive and more FE focused. And I think that both you and this Zach I just interviewed uh, are of the latter kind. What do you think about that notion? Uh, I would uh, I would agree with that. I think I'm. I think I if if I sit for a while, I can refine answers to be kind of deliberate and concise, I suppose. Uh, but when I'm when I'm having a conversation with uh, another individual, um, it's it's hard to refine it in my head right before I speak. So I just sort of um, speak as the information comes to me. I mean, it comes to me, and then if it's logically sound, it just goes out without really having any sort of structure to it. So that's when the NE is primarily engaged, the NE and the FE, yeah. Um, would, you be, would you be inclined towards understanding that as a model of, understanding it in the model as a distinct subtype or a differentiation that occurs because of environmental factors? So the what would be the the subtype then? The subtype would be uh, the SI and the FE are switched. Is that what you're saying? Well, that's that's one way of putting it. Yeah, I mean, I would say definitely switched in terms of weight. Whether they're switched in terms of frequency, I don't know. Hmm. Or ability level with perhaps. Um. I think I don't know if I've ever met an INTP who would be the subtype of concise and to the point. Uh, would you? Is there any? Is there anyone you would identify as that subtype? If if we're presuming that that those subtypes do exist. The more concise kind. Yeah, like is there someone you in your life that you could identify? I would say as just like? about all the INTPs we've encountered, except for you and this other Zach. Or fit the latter kind, the more concise kind. I see. <coughs> um. <coughs> Excuse me. I, uh. I do think that, yeah, I think, um. I think the FE can definitely be developed, uh, more so in, in some INTPs. I feel like my FE is fairly developed. Um, it, as opposed to most INTPs I come across, right? Uh, I think most INTPs I've come across are they aren't as well. I think the podcast has a lot to do with it too, right? When I when I first came on, I think I was more reluctant to expand. And I think that's another thing too. When INTPs come on, they could be um, more restrained. I think, I think as INTPs become more comfortable in, in areas, their FE becomes more prominent as opposed to when they're initially entering an uncomfortable space. So it could well, be that. I mean, my takeaway from that last conversation was, at the end, I was fairly convinced that uh, this other Zach was an INTP. For a considerable amount of the conversation, I was thinking he's probably an ENTP. So he's he's quite uh, quite a gregarious INTP, but I I ultimately conclude you know get but gregarious not exactly like me, not quite so. There's a certain pattern of INTPs where they speak where they change speed more. INTPs change speed less than do ENTPs. We tend to speed up and say, so, and he was, he didn't really have that change of speed thing. So I, I think in the end, 
I agreed with his own self-assessment, which was INTP, and but Grail said a lot less than did uh, than did Zach and I. Uh, that might have something to do with the male or female thing. Do you believe that female INTPs are less gregarious or more gregarious, or do you think that the correlation isn't on gender? Mm, I mean, I'm, I can only speak from um, my own current understandings. But I would think that there could be a gender correlation there, but I, I don't know for sure. I mean, I I don't think there would be a gender correlation. I think that, I, I, see, what other INTPs have we had on the show that were male? Well, there was Lorenz last night. I don't know if you watched that one or not. But uh, there... Has been. We need a database. I, I don't know. You're asking <laughs> the guy with the SI who's in the fifth slot somehow, or the fourth and a half slot. It's like I skip four. I go from one, two, three, four point nine, and then five. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um. I. Uh, I definitely think that some um, INDPs are more, you know, regardless. Like you say it's. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know if it would be, if it would be gender related at all. Uh, although I will say that most the INTP women we've had on are more kind of concise and uh, careful with with what they say, you know. Well, not I guess that implies that I would be uncareful, <clears throat> or me and Zach would be uncareful in what we say, which isn't what I mean. I mean just like more uh, reluctant to speak immediately. I suppose. How do you think an INTP behaves differently if you were to be in a state of existential angst? <laughs> Being kind of meta. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess they. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that question? That's a pretty uh, clever one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I I think that'd be more. Um, I think they they get kind of. Well, I have a friend who's an INTP, and he when he gets in like I can tell when he gets in weird, strange moves. Uh, there's a um, my friend is an INTP. Sometimes they will become very abrupt in their interactions with people. So I think that's like, I don't know. I don't know if he, if that's necessarily like, I think maybe INTPs have the tendency to be erupt in anyways. You know, I think they, I think, I think they procrastinate more. They procrastinate more? Really? Um, you know, abrupt is a cool old fashioned word in that, uh, and it conveys a lot of, it's a good word. It says a lot, you know. Um, what would you do if you were in such a state to pull yourself out of that state or to, if, or do you think that remaining in that state for some period of time is desirable? I think, um, I think when INTPs get an existential, I guess, despair or whatever, uh, they... They have to spend a lot of time trying to identify what the, the cause of it. Where the FI is so low um, in, in their function stack, then it's, it's hard for them to actualize what what they're actually experiencing, right? Uh, so they, they have to take that time to kind of identify what's going on and how to work through it. Um, but solutions toward it, uh, I guess it's it's up to the INTP. Uh, I mean, I, I'm sure different INTPs have different... Um, ways of dealing with it. If I were to give advice to an INTP about how to deal with existential crises or despair or whatever, I would tell them to uh, take a lot of, to do some introspection, kind of reflect on on what's going on, the, the factors that are going on around them, and try to identify if any of those are uh, ultimately causes of it. Um, I would recommend that they practice some sort of meditation as well. Uh, the next question I have is, 
As an ENTP, I experienced, and I made a video about it the other night, something called, I refer to as existential terror. But I think that also has to do with my age, right? Because my parents are getting very old, and... How old are your parents? Just, uh, well, they're 80. They're 80. Uh, and, you know, I know people live can live a lot longer than that, but... Uh, my mom is not mentally where she once was, and she seems to be declining somewhat. So it's a matter of, you know, that, that, that tends to lead me to feeling existential terror, which feels like to me a loss of breath, a sort of gasping gasping right in front of me-ness of mortality and of the passage of time and of things not being what they once were, things changing, uh, relationships changing, family statuses changing, you know, having not that long ago gotten divorced obviously has a lot to do with that because I feel the, the weight of being alone even though I'm not alone in any meaningful sense, I'm surrounded by people, but... So, my experience of it is more... It's an... It's, a, it's an intense and fairly short-lived feeling. Do you think that that is something that is... specific to the ENTP? Is it an NTP thing? Or does the INTP have some other version of that? I think um, I think the INTPs could definitely experience that as they grow older. Uh, I think that um, well, usually when I fall in existential despair, or or I guess I don't know if I would identify it as existential terror. It's more of like <clears throat> I think the uh, for me personally, I feel like there's there's always some sort of some sort of guide that I'm unconscious of that kind of leads like seeds of, of knowledge through a path that I'm not sure where I'm going. And once I stop receiving answers or insights, then the IDP is kind of left up to sort of categorize and rationalize the information they have currently have in them. And uh, they have to kind of be able to work on their own uh, when, when that... Uh, when that force leaves them, and then it's kind of uh, it's difficult because it you don't it's hard to rationalize um, when we no longer have insights or any knowledge coming to you, even if you sh try to acquire it, then it's harder to make sense of 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 your your yourself and your relation to the world that you exist in, and that's uh, that's a difficult process to do on your own. Uh, if there's no relational influences or <clears throat> vectors going on currently, uh, but yeah. What do you what do you seek when you feel as though you found the? You know, I think each of us in life goes through a series of times, some of which are <coughs> flow states, basically. In which we, uh, in which we produce whatever work we're doing without really thinking about it, and it usually feels pretty good. There are other states of anxiety during certain when certain things are looming, maybe, or things that are already worried about, and there are states of contentment where you feel like, ah, things are coming together. I, I'm on the, making the right choices. It's working. Uh, when you're in that last state, what things are cueing you to feel that way or to think that way? When I, um, when I feel like I'm understanding a... Uh, when, I, when I develop a new understanding of, of, I suppose, a framework, or I think uh, what... I think to kind of clarify what I was speaking about earlier, I think that um, INTPs can go through this a process where they 
they feel kind of, um, I think INTPs and ENTPs are probably guilty of this too, they, they doubt themselves a lot. And they go through periods of time where they look at the information that they currently have in them or the experiences for the ENTPs that they're currently going through and they perhaps fail to see any deeper meaning to them or they the deeper meaning that they once had to them uh, is no longer readily apparent. And then they get, they sort of have to rely on their own, uh, the processes by which they usually navigate the world to kind of develop that sense again. And that's what leads to the periods of uh, existential despair and terror. Interesting. I think that seems like a good stopping spot for this video. I don't know how long it is. 15 minutes. That seems about good. All right. Thanks for watching Talking with Famous People. Thank you.